from Kyrene Lanes and Chandler here for the title matches of today's JBT event. Two of the hottest bowlers in the Arizona Conference, Aaron Munyan and Cortez Shank playing. Cortez, of course, the, the hottest bowler in this and many other solar systems. But uh, Aaron's been red hot too, won his first career title uh, just a couple months ago and finished in top five yesterday. So two bowlers that are pretty confident in their games right now going head to head here. That's uh, Munyan started strike, spare, strike. Meanwhile, Tez went spare open, so he's going to have to do some catching up in this match, which he's perfectly capable of doing. Didn't have to catch up much today, though. He led right from the start. Started off with 269, never looked back for a plus 149 five-game qualifier, easily leading. And it's pick your poison today, and that's a really good day to lead the tournament. You get to play whoever you want to play instead of the other way around. Talking, to the talking all about Zach Martinez. No, don't say anything about him. Clutch, clutch double to beat Nick in the semis and his completely unclutched semifinal. <laughs> here, uh, 130 against uh, Munyan to get here. Tez beat Van Pickle. Quickly improving Brian Van Sickle, his real name. 250 to 230 in the scratch semi. Pulled on the 2012 Nationals pattern. That's the Baton Rouge one. Uh, 50 down cut and scratch. and. Uh, 17 down in handicap, and you can see they're a little touchy as right now Tez lost on that left hand lane. 39 40 typically in this center has 40 hooking a lot more than 39. That's uh, close. Yeah, there you go. Shank, not a, not a fan of really either title match pair. We bowled on 37 and 8 yesterday. He was able to overcome that with a big 240 game to win the title, so he's going to have to figure out that left lane before Munyan gets away from him right here. On the other side, in the handicap division, anybody named Jake who started the tournament is still alive in the tournament, as it's Jake Hilton playing Jake Tucker for the title. Jake has, I'm going to say Jake has, and no one's going to know what I'm talking about. Hilton has two titles to his credit, while Tucker has yet to win. Oh, Money got that way out. Didn't get the 10 pin to fall over there. Totally different Aaron Money in the last couple months than uh, prior to that in his JBT career. He's, he's gotten just a notch better that got him from being a you know, finalist to a champion. That's Hilton's first open, and he looks like he can't believe it. He looks like he got, uh, I think he got something in his eye, actually, is what happened. I thought it was just like <laughs> feigning shock. Tucker used to pull out of the Northwest Conference up in Oregon and moved down here to the desert and has done very well since he's moved down here. Nice shot there. The difference handicap wise is eight. Tucker has to be Hilton by eight to tie and nine to win. And with that strike, he trails now by 10. So down by 18 when he had the pins in, but can close it to only eight if he can double up here in his sixth frame. Tucker up first. Wearing the lime green today. I guess that's a St. Patrick's Day thing. No, oh, gets that 10 pin to trip out twice, and it's an 8 pin game over there. Munyan, meanwhile, leads by 14, spare working in the fifth. That time he gets delighted to carry. A lot of side roll for a lefty. You can see a a lot of lefties. We saw Robert Douglas yesterday just go straight down the boards. Aaron does not do that. His A game is a lot of side roll, a lot of torque, but if he's in the pocket, he can make those pins tough. We all know this guy can, though. Let's that one go way out there in lane 40. You can do that as that ball just kind of rolls out high flush and gives a look of confusion as he goes over to 39. A look of confusion is not a look we see very often on this kid anymore. But he has no clue what to do on 39 now. We talk about him being so knowledgeable about his own game and adjustments to make. This is going to be a guess right here. Let's see if it's a good one. Deeper, obviously. Oh, man. Body language tells the story as it was a great guess, as it turns out. Perfect hit, perfect shot to see a... Modern technology hit as he solid nines from there. 
Meanwhile, Hilton doubled. They go so fast over there in handicap, and Tucker doesn't get the three in a row here, so the lead's tilted back to Hilton. Tez no problem with the spare, but he trails early. But the good news for Shank is that Aaron wasn't able to run away from him while Tez is struggling here. He's only got Dutch. You don't want to give Cortez second chances. That's what happened yesterday in the title match. Let's see what happens later on today. With the spare, Tucker trails by 19 with pins, and there's only three frames left over there. Tucker had a previous high finish of third, so this will be his best finish no matter what. Meanwhile, Hilton, who doesn't ever listen to a word I say, might back, away, back his way into the title. Man, it's the give and take of all that power. Because he has to cover more boards with all that rotation, that ball occasionally finishes way behind the head pin. That was certainly the case there. And leaves a pretty tricky little split here. 3-9-10, gotta worry about that back pin. Nice shot by Tucker in the eighth. He'll more than likely take a real wide sweeping hook at this. Try to get the three into the, the pin into the 10. Ball will take out the nine, just like that, nicely done. If he stays Dutch with that real nice conversion, part two should be fun, be sure to watch it.